Discipline has been the cause for success. You can think of Rome, and you can think of someone like Napoleon. And you think, well, what does the typical empire need in order to be successful? And the thesis of this video is going to be discipline and why it's so important to the success of an empire or a conquest. Well, when you think of the warriors of Rome, in particular the city-states like Sparta, well, you see that they're totally disciplined in owning no material possessions. And why would you say that's important? Well, you see that in order to do their conquests, there's no material gain to be necessary. And you see this later in Plato's discussion of the warrior. But if we more so focus on the effects of Napoleon, well, of course, you're still going to need disciplined soldiers. But why? Why Napoleon in particular? And this is due to the Prussians. So after the Prussians lost to Napoleon, they needed to come up with a new strategy. And a new strategy that was able to defeat great commanders or, or just great command in general. And this strategy that they came up with was known as Aufdrag's tactic, uh, a decentralized way of commanding compared to the typical way of command before in the Prussian army, where you would give an order and take that order or else. Instead, Aufdrag's tactic was more so a decentralized way. And this uh, new strategy can be seen exemplarily in the Second World War, but before, it wasn't really shown in the First World War, and this could be due in part to the machine gun not being able to let the new strategy come into play, but this still stayed in the psyche of the repressions and Germans in general. And so we know in World War II it made quick work of France, who was still stuck in, in previous ideas like the Maginot Line. And this tactic of decentralized command, or decentralized soldiers in general, relied heavily on one thing, and that was the quick thinking of the soldiers near the bottom of the decision-making pole. With Aufdrag's tactic, you didn't have a direct way of accomplishing the goal. Rather, it was do the goal, and you figure it out. And this was, of course, that the main mission was in mind, but you, you had a little bit of wee, you know leeway in it. And when you have something like Blitzkrieg in the Second World War, you had no time to waste, no time to recuperate and think, okay, well, what's the next strategy here? So decisions had to be quickly. And they were able to make decisions that were probably best for the individual, whatever the soldier thought, or the officer. Of course, and this is seems kind of unrelated, but it all ties in part to discipline. Well, you need to have discipline in order to have the willpower to see, well, what do we have to do here? You're mixing discipline and critical thinking into one. You have to analyze the situation itself and weigh the potential courses of action that may occur. So, off the drag's tactic is a mix of kind of that quick thinking, but you also have to recognize that, well, you have a general goal, and you may have a, some advice given, but you make the end end goal decision. And we see this, it's utilized today in armies like the US military. So, Napoleon had this, this nice effect on our military practices. And like I said, in Plato's Republic, the society is broken down into separate groups. And they each do their individual task, and they do that task very well. That's the whole point of Plato's Republic. Well, the warrior class is stripped of all their possessions, and they're put into these groups. Because the whole goal is you want no property, because then there's no physical desire to loot, take, pillage. There's no need for that, because you have no property. There's no greed. And this is, of course, well, then the discipline of the soldiers has to be very strong. And Plato's idea was more so a, I would say, a thought experiment into the importance of the discipline of the soldiers. And well, you may think, well, I'm not a soldier, so how does this really apply to me? I'm not in the Prussian army. I'm not in the U.S. army. I'm not even in a society I want to be like in Plato's. Well, you don't really need to be a warrior like in Plato's time or even modern time, a soldier. The idea of the warrior-like discipline and utilizing the understanding of Aufstrich's tactic in a modern life can actually be quite helpful. So we'll focus on, well, the regular person. And it may seem like I'm jumping around, I got the Plato and the Prussians and the Napoleon, but when you see and you look around in the West, you see that people are really lost and that they will be plagued with the absurd. <laughs> I don't want to, it's cheesy, but 
yeah, there's just there's obviously a meaning meaning crisis in the West, and you can peg it to many things. That's not the purpose of this video, but there is a lack of meaning, and so I think it's due in part to the West as a society has lost that discipline. Not only the discipline to do the right thing, but the discipline to actually think. And well, you're given an order, but that might might not be the necessarily the best strategy. And when you have a strategy like off strike tactic in your own life, you understand what's best for you. And I think most of the time, people know deep down inside what is best for them, but instead they self-sabotage. And this is obvious in our daily lives. You look in the West. The West has been the grounds for great innovation, for ideas or, or just inventions in general. But the West is slowly, or maybe not so slowly, losing its grip on this front, this intellectual front where you would have a great theologian, scientist, or engineer, well, now a young person would be distracted by frivolous distractions that are, are today. And this is in part, like I said, due to the lack of discipline. And in order for a society to succeed, if you look at this like a military society, a military unit, you need the subordinates to listen and to do what's best for them. And that's kind of essentially off-strike tactic. Well, you have your goal in mind, but you still need to accomplish the goal. But then you think, okay, if your main goal given to you by your superior is not even in your best interest, well, then you have to think, do I have to make a change on my own? And maybe you think, well, maybe this is why Germany had lost, in part, in the Second World War, a lack of decentralized command. But I'm... I'm not going to comment too much, just some speculation. So I believe that this will be the future of the West, a place lacking of discipline and drive. A place where ideas are not born, but instead planted. A place where thereby discipline is necessary. And even though self-discipline is necessary to the idea of off track tactic, it was only successful if the leaders had the best strategy in mind for the subordinates. But when this is true and when the superior has the best ideas in mind and has the actual understanding well then you have the self-discipline of the soldiers and you'll have great effects and when you look at a business and you see well if you have to dictate every single move to one of your employees it's of course not going to be that successful as it could be and you can think of it this way to drive it home if a soldier knows that sending his soldiers into battle will cause imminent and obvious death even though he's going to disobey an order well what is he going to do he's going to probably he should hopefully disobey the order and that is the whole point of off strike tactic you want to be able to say well i know what's best here i can see the situation with my own eyes and you disobey a direct order and I think this is one aspect that the West lacks in. They don't have the individual discipline to remove the faults that maybe plague themselves. They see the problem inside, but they choose not. They take the order and they just execute the order. They don't look at an individual level. I think that the West will only grow strong if the sand that is used to forge the cement is hard instead of soft. It's a little metaphorical, but I think you get my point can't turn into concrete if the sand is just soft and once this has been fixed and once the west has grown the ability to resist the calls of decadence or bloodlust well then the society will be as hard as stone and now i'll actually cement the idea of off strike tactic well, what does it even mean in a practical sense well you can see the idea before it was even really cemented into the the prussian military ideology from the example of the cavalry men Frederick Wilhelm von Sedilz during the Battle of Zorndorf, and this was August 25th, 1758. So the story goes that they're, he's commanding the Prussian army, and he's going against some Russian troops. And so he's ordered, he's ordered to strike the Russian troops. And he's given the message by his flugel adjutant, and he said to him, well, I'm not going to attack yet. So the messenger went back and he got a new message. This time, well, it wasn't so so nice. It said, well, you got to attack, okay? Because the king, King Frederick the Great, he's leading this army. And he's telling his, his subordinate, attack, attack, please attack. Well, 
Wilhelm von Sedilz did not attack yet. And this is the third time the messenger comes back and he says, well, something along the lines of, if you don't attack now, I'm going to cut your head off. And so he replies, well, so the king may have it, but for now I'll make use of it. And after he, he proceeded to attack when he thought was best. And guess what? He was successful in doing so. And even greater of a fact, well, who congratulated him first? It was none other than the king himself. And you can see the West is really lacking this ability to just say no. To say no, I'm not going to attack. I'm not going face front into battle. I'm actually going to wait and see what I can do. See when I want to attack best. And this is a huge amount of discipline. It's not only discipline to respect your own intellectual capabilities, it's also discipline to have the the respect for yourself and think, well, I could, it could be so easy to give in. Maybe some people wouldn't have gave in the first time. Maybe some people wouldn't have given up the second time. But by the third time, when the king is calling for your head, I would say that a fair amount of people would have went into battle and probably have lost the battle way worse than it could have been. So you really have to stand up for yourself and be like the Prussian cavalryman Wilhelm von Sedilz and well he shows it best. Stand up for what you know to be right even if it means extreme consequences and you see likely by doing the right thing well even the king will congratulate you. So remember it's okay to disobey sometimes if you know it's right. Sometimes they're tested multiple times. And well, only after the rooster crows the third time will you know the truth. So for your sake and for my sake, let's try and bring discipline into our life. It's so easy to say that and <laughs> it's a joke to just say, well, just be disciplined. But in reality, just doing the little things and implementing a little bit of the off track tactic in your own life, well, Maybe it'll be easier to resist the easy route, and you'll be able to commit yourself to strength and integrity, because the pyramid is built from the ground up. So, it may be hard, and we may fail, but we keep going.